Let the experiment begin. Um. Hey, best pally, I'm Allie, and I am generally covered in a lot of wearable tech. And I even sleep on a smart mattress. All of these things give me a lot of information about what's going on in my body. Heart rate, HRV, sleep cycles. But how do I take all that data and make sense of what changes I should make to optimize and improve. Enter SPAN. The app that I'm gonna be testing in this video has coaches that take all your data and suggest lifestyle experiments for you. And then the app actually tracks if those experiments are making a difference in your longevity and health. Because up until now, I've just been guessing. I am not a good guesser. Basically, they have this big catalog of potential changes I could make in lifestyle, diet, sleep, exercise, all things that could improve my health. And they are based on scientific papers. Excellent. Love science. Yes, but I do not need all of those experiments, so they're going to help me figure out which ones would be the best for me based on my needs in my data. Awesome, more science. The first step is to let Span know about my goals and my current lifestyle, so I have a call with their MD. Hey Adam, good to meet you. My chat with Dr. Adam was awesome and extensive, and it was so cool talking to somebody who specializes in longevity, and he just sent me a health report based on our discussion. I now know exactly my next step, okay. Let me show you something. This is my usual dinner. Please note it's exceptional size. Oh, and on days that I lift, I eat even more after I finish these plates. So yeah, it's a lot, but what's more notable about this is that it's currently 10 p.m. Now look what happened to my glucose overnight. You see, while I'm sleeping, it's up way high, and then when I wake up, it goes back to normal. So my body is processing all that food when I'm unconscious, which means I'm probably getting a higher resting heart rate, a lower HRV, less deep sleep, I am digesting instead of resting, which I thought they went together, rest and digest, I guess not. So, this late night eating may be holding me back from being my awesomest. In the past, I've talked about how much I love fasting and then eating a ton really late, but seeing this data and talking with Adam has convinced me, yeah, I should change. So this is it. My first experiment is gonna be finishing eating three hours before I go to bed. Now, still a ton of food, but it's 6 p.m. Let the experiment begin. And now I'm connected to my in-app coach, Zach, who's a certified personal trainer, certified nutrition coach, and I can text him directly for help. It's funny, he was like, yes, this is a great experiment and low friction, and I was like, let me be clear. I have been fasting all day and then eating a ton at like 9 p.m. for many years. This will be a huge shakeup to my whole day and all of my habits. There will be friction. So I feel lucky to have him help me stay accountable. And you, I can tell you're watching, I better stick to it, thank you. I say a huge shake up to my whole day because it is now 4.30 and I have to stop my usual fasted focused work to go work out. <sighs> Normally I wouldn't do this until like 7 or 8 p.m. but I wanna keep the habit of working out before I eat. So this is cutting into my day. What, I'm squatting during daylight, what? Now that I'm done eating early, I can't just go pass out. So I guess I'll go back to the work that I stopped but now I'm in a fed state so it feels less focused. So this three hours of working after eating is what feels weird and different and I don't like. So all of that is why this will be hard for me to stay committed and why I very much need this data to come through for me. Meaning all of my internal indicators are saying, keep fasting, stay productive, you're fine, eat later. So I'm going to have to rely on my external indicators to convince me there's a better path. Which reminds me, if you don't have as many external indicators as me, that's okay. I understand I'm a crazy person, not everyone has a billion devices. You can see all the data connections they have at the bottom, more than I even have. Fitbit, Peloton, there's even a DNA test you can upload. If you have only one of these devices, it still works, or even none. They support doing a blood test before and then experiment and then blood test after to see if any markers changed there. Well, that didn't take long at all. I thought this would be like a really long vlog. We're on day three, my glucose is already down 9%. And then the downstream effects of that, I got the most deep sleep I ever had in my life. Look at that, two and a half hours, that's up 93%. Let me explain why this is remarkable. It's not that I'm sleeping more, I get plenty of sleep, look at all those congratulation notifications. The problem is that sleep was not as good as it should have been. Okay, so what you want when you're sleeping is for your heart rate to hit its lowest about halfway into your sleep and then start coming back up. So it makes this nice V shape that I had last night. But let me show you what my heart rate was doing every night before that when I was eating right before bed. Oh, that's not, that's not a V. So holy crap, already seeing success as long as I can stick to it. Day four, and I wanna talk about the fact that I thought all of my cues and motivation for this would be external. So my coach saying, good job, or all those screens that I showed you, that's an external thing telling me to keep going. 
This is internal. I feel great. I haven't had coffee today and I feel like I'm on. I mean, I'm always on because I'm super charming and camera, but really this has made a hard change easy. I've been trying to do this for over a year. I'm not exaggerating. Even my DNA test from the DNA company said, you shouldn't even eat dinner to avoid eating before you go to bed. And I was like, meh. I probably wouldn't feel a difference, but I'm seeing a difference and feeling a difference and I'm really glad that I finally made the change. It's now my bedtime and it's been four hours since I've eaten last, so since I started feeling the effects immediately, I've been extending the challenge by an hour since I've already felt a difference. I wanna see if I can go even bigger. Uh, it's 10 p.m. and I'm about to start eating dinner, so uh, failed tonight. I just had a really long shoot all day and I'm so used to just Staying in it, I was really focused and energized and didn't stop to think that maybe I should focus on my health. I mean, I'm glad I'm honestly showing you that I'm not superhuman and changing heavily ingrained habits is not as easy as, oh, well, just get positive feedback and then it'll switch. No, this is, this is how I've lived my life for a really long time, so that switch is gonna be tough. Okay, last night I did still keep my four hour window. Look at me, still perfect. <laughs> Except I went to bed at 2.30 to make that happen, which is not the sleep optimization that we intended. All right, I'm back on track. This is a protein shake breaking my fast and it's still daylight out. I can see day, kinda. And what's cool is that span is showing that my overall trending is still headed in the right direction instead of just looking at the one night fail that my perfectionist brain would focus on. So it is a cool, helpful illustration that you don't have to be perfect even if you slip up. The graph is going that way, but it's not perfectly linear. Sometimes it's down and back up, but you're going in the right direction. Let's talk about another metric that I didn't even know I should be getting better at. My wake after sleep onset is way down. That means means when I'm going to sleep, I'm staying there. And I don't wanna just attribute this to my glucose being lower and my heart rate getting down faster. So I'm not eating before bed, which also means I'm not taking in liquids before bed so I don't have to pee in the middle of the night as much. I didn't even think about the fact that my late meal was interrupting my dreams with needing a toilet. Checking in after two weeks, I feel like I don't have to spend as much time in bed. That's kind of nuts. For a very long time, I've been very dedicated to once I get in bed, I stay there for nine hours until I get out. I mean, you saw my Apple health notification saying, good job, you are in bed forever. But now that I'm spending that time more effectively, it seems like I'm more refreshed and maybe I can get away with seven hours in bed one night, eight, maybe less. And this whole time I've been talking about deep sleep because I was concerned with that. I saw it was low and it's really big for promoting growth and muscle tissue repair, you know, gains. But now even my REM sleep is up, which helps with learning and memory and mood, which is obviously less important than being nice and buff, but so cool that I've got that too. Okay, I wanted to wait till day 30 to show you I made it a full month, check it out. And last night I clocked in a deep sleep personal record, one minute more than the one I showed you before. I just love that there's an app and a coach out there helping me track sleep PRs and other stuff. So I'm excited for future experiments. They have this thing in the app where you can compare the experiments to each other. So I have all the data on what fasting before bed did for me, and then I can say, ooh, but look at what vegan did for me because I'm vegan now, definitely gonna track that here. And definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that video. It's gonna be a good one. And shout out to Span and my coach Zach for this surprising and surprisingly enjoyable experience. If you liked this, you'll probably like seeing me take on a 10 day breathwork challenge. I'll put that down there for you. Hey Best Pally, I'm Allie and also High Strong. So today starts my challenge to commit to doing breath work for 10 days. I'm documenting this to show you the journey, the effect it has on me, and if it is worthwhile or stupid. I'm taking this challenge on through the other ship 